Hey guys, Mike Chen. Before getting to this video, a little Japanese snack time with the sponsor of this video, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. And this month's theme is Sakura Startlight Snack Fest. If you guys don't know, Sakurako and Tokyo Treat are subscription Japanese snack boxes sourced locally in Japan and shipped anywhere you are in the world. And as soon as you open the box, you get a booklet telling you what the different snacks are and also fun little tidbit information about Japan. And whenever you open your Tokyo Treat box, you're gonna get some of the latest, most exclusive limited edition snacks Snacks, like the banana caramel Kit Kat. I opened a bag of this a couple days ago, already finished it. I love banana. Hmm. Apple soda. Tart and refreshing. Now for Sakura Cole. And this month's theme is Moonless Sakura. Rice crackers, peach hibiscus tea, strawberry cake. This is delicious. Sakura sweet potato. Creamy, sweet, and so, so fragrant. And inside your Sakura box, you'll get 20 of the most traditional, artisanal, authentic Japanese treats made by local snack makers, some of which have been making snacks for over 100 years. You also get teas, and every month you'll get a new tableware item. And this month's is a Sakura Koti cup. And the theme, of course, for both boxes is still Sakura, because Sakura season is still happening in Japan. And although spring is almost over in Japan, with these boxes, you can get a taste of Sakura season right here in the comfort of your own home. And I love the mission statement of this company to promote traditional Japanese culture through the medium of snacking, which is just the best way to do it. And I promise you, whenever you see these boxes show up at your doorstep, you just feel so excited. So if you want to give it a try, go to my link down below. Use my promo code DUMPLING for $5 off either box. Or use the special promo code HANAMI and get extra bonus items inside your Sakura Cold box for life. Right, I'm going to finish snacking and uh, enjoy the video. So here you can get all sorts of seafood rice bowls. There's oysters, there's king crab, all you can eat snow crab, or all you can eat any crab on this list. Let's do that. This is really interesting. First dish they brought over, a giant tempura king crab claw. Squeeze a lemon. Looks like some pink Himalayan salt on the side. This is a heavy, heavy claw. Whoa. This is fried so well. You can pretty much eat that shell. That is one of the most succulent, tender chunk of king crab I have ever been into. You can see already how juicy this is. Delight and pour a crunchy shell on the outside. Absolutely perfect. Little dunk into the salt. Mm. Oh my gosh, this thing is crunchy, it's tender. It's just one of the sweetest things from the ocean you can put in your mouth. Again, I never had king crab tempura like this before. And a grilled plate of king crab just right in front of me. Let me finish this first. This is incredible, by the way. A little salt, all you need. Mm. Things are starting to smell really good around here. By the way, this is breakfast. Grilled king crab, giant plate of, I think, boiled snow crab. Before getting to these two plates of crab, they also brought over, I think this is a snow crab sashimi. It's my first time having snow crab sashimi. I tried king crab sashimi before. Snow crab one might be more tender. I mean, this thing is just melts in your mouth. Pure, pure oceany sweetness. Mm. 
so soft and gentle. I gotta find out if those two things, the tempura king crab and the sashimi snow crab, I gotta find out if that's all you can eat, but let me get cracking on these crab legs. King crab is grilled. You can smell that awesome briny charred aroma just by being near this plate. And they give you some pretty hardcore scissors to cut the king crab with. These are ginormous chunks of king crab. picture of this deserves to be hung on the fridge. Oh my gosh. This is better than any king crab you'll find in a Vegas buffet. First of all, it's grilled, so all that naturally sweet flavor of the crab, that's just accentuated by the grilling process. You got the nice smokiness of the grill as well on the crab. This is about as sweet as a crab as you can get. I mean, the crab here looks incredibly fresh. So apparently this company is also a crab wholesaler. Unless you're eating a live king crab, it's about as fresh as you're gonna get. Besides the sweetness, there's also a burst of juice. Mm. Which you're pretty much tasting the sweetest part of the ocean. It's gotta be careful operating these scissors. I have a little soy sauce and wasabi, but you don't need to dip this in anything. I mean, you really don't need to dip this in anything, but they do have butter available. I like just a spray of lemon. That's so perfect. I know this place is in a very touristy area, but I can legitimately tell you, this is amazing. Next up, let's dig into a snow crab. Snow crab does seem a little dry. No. I think king crab is great. I mean, it's still good, but definitely a little dry. As I was eating the snow crab, they just brought over the hairy crab. This is really a tasting of crab from around the world. So this is taken apart. So you have all that delicious meat there. And then on the inside, look at that. They kept all that delicious flavor crab essence inside the crab. That is the miso. That is the best part of the crab. That's why it's hidden all the way in these chambers. That's your treasure. This seems like it's really fresh. Be careful, this is kind of stabby as well. Break that open. Look at all that juicy, sweet, succulent meat. Oh. That meat is not as sweet as the king or the snow crab. It's way more tender. And if you want more flavor in this thing, Take some of that meat, take some of that nice, delicious miso, put it on top of the crab meat. So you're essentially seasoning this crab. <laughs> mm. That bite might be better than a king crab. This is one of my favorite crabs to eat in Japan <laughs> because the innards of this crab, the flavor is so rich and creamy and deep. It's basically the crab's flavor essence. And when you put that on top of the sweet crab meat, it's like your taste buds just, just went for a swim in the ocean in the best way possible. And this crab is definitely super fresh. The meat from the joints, this is actually some of the sweetest, most tender meat and it's right by the dipping source. So just go ahead and dunk it in some of that miso. Holy moly. Crab eating 
It doesn't get much better than that. What's also really cool is that they have an array of dipping sauces and sauce to use to kind of keep it crabby adventure more interesting. And hot butter. I always like to squeeze some lemon into that. Always just so in awe whenever I open up a king crab leg at this giant sweet piece of meat. This time, a little butter. Meat's ultra buttery. This is actually a really nice buffet. I mean, besides the snow crab, if you told me the king crab and the, and the hairy crab was still alive about 10 minutes ago, I believe you. Just not many things in this world more beautiful than that. I love it so much that they give you fresh wasabi to eat with your crab. But let's try something. Wasabi and hot butter. Dip some king crab in there. That is not a crabby combo. Fresh wasabi is not nearly as spicy as the neon green stuff that looks like E.T.'s blood that you find in the tube. And that sharpness is even more balanced out by the butter. So it's buttery with a little wasabi jab to go with that sweet king crab. That's not bad. Anyway, that buffet was 10,000 yen each. So about 70 US dollars for, or you can eat snow king and hairy crab. That's not a bad deal for the quality of the crab. And especially when along the streets of Tsukiji, you can probably get like three king crab pieces for 2,000 yen. So the buffet is a much better deal. The thing with crab though, not very filling, already hungry. As soon as I turned the corner on this alley, this curry place right here, it's got a line out the door. I love hole in the wall curry shops like this. And as soon as you get in, they give you a cup of water and a little coffee. sauce and a freshly fried katsu. Oh, this is so good. This is some mind-blowing curry. It's probably the thickest Japanese curry I've ever had. It's really creamy, almost as if like potato was already somehow mixed into the curry. On the top, crispy looking. And of course, this whole thing just filled with minced meat. Mm. Katsu, insanely crispy on the outside. Inside, very, very tender. And right now, the heat of the curry is starting to hit me. So a little iced coffee. Brings the heat down a little bit. Overall flavor, really deep and spicy and scrumptious. Mm. Definitely the thickest curry in the land. More like a very thick gravy. The rice is really fragrant as well. Whether you're talking texture, flavor. Overall aroma of the dish, that's wonderful. All this, a super hefty portion. About five US dollars. And honestly, the coffee. Goes really well with the curry. Before leaving Jambucha, I really wanted to try this place out, this Wudong place. Look at the line at 3 p.m. That's not even lunchtime, we're dinner time. Someone said that don't be intimidated by the line because it's always a long line. They move really, really quickly. Gotta be honest, a little intimidated. That's a really long line. I can imagine what lunch rush and dinner rush will look like. And why I wait, peach ice cream from Mini Stop. Ooh, this ice cream is... Amazing. Any chance I get to eat at a convenience store in Japan, I do it. And this thing, I think it has some like peach caramelized sugar on top. The ice cream is sublime. And some peach puree, I think, on top. This is better than 99% of ice cream I've had in my life. If you see this ice cream at Mini Stop in Japan, you gotta try this. This is mind blowing. Just got inside. The weight wasn't that bad. It took about 15 minutes. Got the beef food all. Oh, this broth is ridiculous. Mm. So this thing, tons of fatty, thin sliced beef, tons of scallions of some garlic. I put some pepper on here as well. Oh, that beef is so tender. 
That ah, soup is just pure flavor. You can taste the dashi and the fattiness of the beef, and I don't know what else they did with this that made it so magical. I'll take a slurp of noodles, which are nice and firm and chewy. I'll definitely come here and get this. I love this so much, I got a second bowl, and this one is pure beauty. Look at all the eccentric lines on this thing. Some scallions on top. It looks like a gentle, windless pond on a cool, windless summer day where everything's just perfectly still and beautiful. Mm. Chill dashi broth. Mm. I feel like the last dish, I like the broth more than the noodles. When the noodles are chewy, they are not nearly as chewy as these. These are super springy. I feel like Spider-Man could use these to shoot out of his web shooter. It's so elastic and smooth, the ramen is 100% the best part of this dish. Also, at 500 yen, this is about $3 bowl of delicious udon. Yeah, this place has a line for a reason. It's definitely worth a try. Nothing wild on the menu. Everything's just executed perfectly. I've never been in Japan during cherry blossom season before. That's really beautiful. I think I'm just gonna buy some snacks and sit here rest of the day. Oh, seriously, it smells so nice. As always, I'll place a Wednesday list down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.